Hello, and welcome to season two of the Revenue Marketing Report powered by Caliber Mind. Our goal on the RMR is to help marketers move from subject matter experts to strategic business partners. I'm your host, Kamala Thompson, and today I'm thrilled to introduce Helen Abramova. Helen, please introduce yourself. Hello, hello. I'm Helen Abramova. I am a director of marketing operations at Bazaar Voice. I'm very much in the marketo world and community of marketing ops amazing people uh, for multiple times Marketo champion, um, Marketo user group leader in Washington, D.C., and I'm very excited to be here. Wonderful. Thank you for joining us. And I'm excited to talk about this topic because it's kind of a hot button topic out there, and that's whether or not MOPS people need a brand. So we do see that some people are more active than others on social and communities and whatnot. Do you think an online brand is necessary today for somebody's career? <laughs> you know, the favorite answer of all marketing ops people, it depends. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> and we're depends. used to it. <laughs> yeah, so uh, let me unpack it a little bit. Uh, first of all, I really want to um, clarify that personal brand, in general, brand is very different from its original na- like meaning of what is that a brand, right? Whenever we are talking about a brand, I really want to like, can you pause for a second and talk, are we talking about publicity? Are we talking about voice? Are we talking about how many influencing like, like communities you have around you? So like, it's really, we need to kind of um, map it out a little bit. And I do think it's more fair to talk about publicity or like online presence versus brand. Because brand in like in its originality, it's something that is very one directional. So, mm-hmm. and it's very well controlled, like some kind of visual or message or communication that is very much controlled and managed. And now it's always bi-directional. It's always, we have this conversation, we have a dialogue, we have multiple different channels, tactics, uh, like all kinds of, and like, it's not possible, even if you want to control your brand, so to say, it's not even like, there is no, like no meaningful way to do so. Mm -hmm. You have to be consistent across everything you're doing, communicating, talking, working, collaborating with multiple different peoples across your career and like everything else around. That's why, um, like, first of all, even if we are talking about brand, let's like make clear that it's not the brand as its original uh, meaning and um, context. And then in terms of do we, do we need it or not? It really depends on what you are trying to achieve, where you are, and like if you're happy and sustainable and you are currently at the like best of your life, why would you? <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Maybe it's all good. And you don't need even to like to spend too much time and effort on that. I always feel that um, if we are talking about brand, it's important to understand like brand for whom, for what, for what audience. And we really need to be kind of marketers of ourselves, right? If we are trying to do what, we need to do what? And like, what, like we really need to kind of like start thinking strategically about what kind of brand uh, we are trying to develop. Yeah, and I always equate brand for individuals as reputation, and that can precede us or it can be in a very close-knit network. And these days, when you can work for any company from anywhere, why not focus a little bit on what I would say building brand, which is be vocal about asking for references on LinkedIn. A lot of people do research online, make yourself visible, but that doesn't need to mean uh, posting to social media every day and creating articles and videos and all that good stuff. Although, like you mentioned, it depends on what you want to do. So what level of effort do you think people should put into networking? And we'll give a couple scenarios. So scenario one, um, somebody new to marketing operations, just getting started, what kind of things should they be thinking about in terms of networking? That's a good point that I really like. Like whenever we are talking, like let's give me a scenario, give me a kind of like context that they can operate. So um, if someone is relatively young in their career and new, obviously they need to know the landscape. And this is where um, recommendation, yes, you absolutely, it would be very beneficial for you to invest into get to know people. 
understand who are major um, players on that market, where those communities where you can swim <laughs> and learn and listen and be like, listen, like get involved into. And um, this is where it's kind of like, it's developing a, a good habit of um, connecting to people. And I also think it's, it's about um, listening, but also helping out. So you invest in your time, like you don't have a lot to offer yet. So the only thing you can offer is your help and your hours and your um, support. That's why joining market user group or some kind of um, community where people are getting together and talking about different things. This is where it's very beneficial. But at some point, you probably want to either scale it down or change it a little bit or make sure that it's um, sustainable for you. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a big mistake I see people make is that they try to do everything at once and boil the ocean. (laughs) They get passionate about starting a brand and all of a sudden they're on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. The list just keeps going. I love your recommendation about uh, user groups. Can you dig into that a little bit more? What kind of things have user groups done for you in general, like uh, connection wise? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's what I wanted to talk about. <laughs> it, it happened that way that um, I attended one user group and I totally loved it. It was so helpful. And then it kind of dried out. And by the time I graduated from my MBA school and I'm just like, okay, where is, where is the, when is the next Marketo user group meeting? And like nothing is going to be planned. I was like, okay, I'll just take it out and like take it over and run with it. So uh, this is how I started like basically running uh, Washington DC Marketo user group. And uh, it was quite significant <laughs> effort, so to say. I'm saying like, I probably was like the less a uh, connected person in the history of Marketo user group because I've been in the country for four years by the time when I like started it. So um, it was very helpful for me. A lot of uh, connections, a lot of like friends, like real friends and working friends. And um, this is how I get to know a lot of Marketo champions and like the whole community. And um, coming to Marketo summits, became like totally different experience because now you are like a closer connection um like you are enjoying those close connections and uh, friendship and everything so lots of opportunities coming uh, from those as well so let's let's throw another scenario out there let's talk about the level of networking people should think about when they've been in their career let's say Five to seven years, they've kind of capped out at manager of marketing operations. So looking to move above that point, like what, what should they start thinking about? Well, this is becoming <laughs> very complex. I because know. It, it's really <laughs> like, yeah, this is where we need to start thinking through. Um, do they want to make a move within their company or mm-hmm. not? And there's like totally different like sub scenarios. If they want to move up within the company, the prob- like the obvious choice would be developing more relations internally and make sure that your leadership is seeing you, seeing you as a very kind, like good candidate for a promotion. Know what you do, how you do, and you are like you can really, really be helpful and um, successful that way. If you are thinking that like probably my company is not supporting me or like I don't see there are lots of opportunities out there. So I need to make another move, like move into another place, company or agency or starting like a, who knows, maybe a consultancy or something. So this is where you really need to have a very broad uh, connections and network of people who know you. And this is where you probably need to start um, get more focused on who you like who is your audience who is your um maybe <laughs> who are your accounts basically like mm-hmm. do you want to get into what kind of companies who are those people who are hiring how you can get to know them do you want to go to like some specific conferences hopefully they are coming back on uh, not online but in person because this is like a huge opportunity mm-hmm. maybe you want to utilize some kind of um like ask your friends and peers to introduce you to someone. So this is where you really have to be more specific 
and more um, tailored in everything you're doing. Totally agree. Uh, especially if you're changing tracks and want to make a change, let's say you want to go from marketing operations to revenue operations or some other department, that's where tapping into your existing network and getting those referrals can make the difference between successfully making the move and kind of being stuck. So yeah. when we're talking through these different scenarios, I'm hearing one overarching thing and maybe you hear more than one, but what I'm hearing is that if you're going to put any effort into branding yourself, you need to be thoughtful about your goals. Now, can we talk just a little bit about what kind of thought process we should embrace while thinking about our goals? Yeah, um, the way I approach that, I always think that like the more focused you can be in terms of what exactly you want, uh, the more successful and the more, um, it's just like also about ROI basically, <laughs> like how much yeah. efforts we're in investing and how much we are getting from it. And I'm, for myself, it's also very important to have this balance between life and work and family and my hobbies and everything. So it's kind of like where I am in this journey. Do I want to sacrifice more on this side or do I want to get focused on something else? So this is like really this whole mix needs to be very tightened up. Like as soon as you understand very clearly, it's better, like it's just easier to, to move around. Another thing is that uh, sometimes we don't know what we, <laughs> we, we don't know and have this cool, broad discovery can be also a goal. And like, I'm not closing any doors. I just want to explore. But the thing is, if you're trying to find a new job, like you can't physically, like it's not, sustainable try to get to a job where you're looking from startup to large enterprise and everything in between and mm -hmm. agencies it's just like it's so different types of roles that it's it's from my point of view it's just impractical trying to get it all but you can have conversations with your peers who are working in different companies and have a sense of does it sound right? Does it sound wrong to you? You can have close conversations with, with people who have experience of multiple, like, you know, you're trying, you're thinking in-house or agency side of uh, things. You can have these people talking to you and that will give you a little bit more understanding and um, kind of a sense of like where you should go. And ultimately uh, even interviewing is also a good way of networking. Mm -hmm. like I want to interview I want to talk to those people we kind of we interview each other basically mm -hmm. and that would give me a little bit of understanding uh, do I want to do I want to work there or oh, probably mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. yeah that's great um I'm just thinking through anytime you're defining what you want you really have to think about what your values are like you mentioned work home life balance how much time do you want with the family the puppies whatever you have going on um and and then trying to find a scenario that aligns with that and there's so much variability from company to company and now that we're not stuck just looking for jobs in our city and we can look across the country i think that's really opening things up quite a bit yeah and to your point, values, like it's, I understand it might be sounding kind of um, very <laughs> high level, but it's important, like why I want to work over time, why I want, on, I don't want to work over time, why I want to spend so much time um, honing those skills and to go for this particular role. Mm -hmm. Maybe I might be much more happier doing something else, being an individual contributor or being a consultant. And I'm talking to people and they're saying like, I'm working 30 hours a week <laughs> and I'm like, for any money of the world, I won't work more. And some yeah. people would be saying like, I have to reach kids and pandemic, like I can't afford working more. And some people are saying like, I'm in the prime time of my life. I'm absolutely going for it. So I think it's, it's, it's truly important to um, take into consideration all of those um, factors. You know, I, I really like your point about how it isn't sustainable to be jumping all over industries. And I, I think that's true. I mean, I think a lot of us in operations thrive on change because <laughs> it's interesting. Um, but for those of us who are, are looking to climb, and this applies to most marketing disciplines, it's very different moving from a growth-minded startup 
to an established enterprise and an established business unit. Like sometimes you can look out and find a new business unit that's in that startup mentality a little bit more. But usually um, the kinds of access you get to the other departments, everything just changes. Would you agree with that? Yes, I do agree. And I do think that, um, you know, whenever I'm mentoring people and I'm saying like, you have to really like define the, your target role up to like company size, <laughs> revenue, mm -hmm. like industry, like everything. What kind of like, what kind of people you want to be surrounded by? Uh, what like, do you want to be, to be able to have a casual conversation or more formal? And there is like no right or wrong. It's like truly where you're thriving better. And uh, you can have like a few options here, kind of A, B, and C versions of like optimal um, scenario. But the more specific you can be, the better outcome would be. Even if you have like to compromise right now, but at this particular role, you'll be able to get those number of skills or exposure to those types of organizational challenges or um, business needs. And from that role, you'll be able to jump where you want to be. I've always kind of thought about uh, a career or different jobs like dating. You're kind of figuring out what you can't live with just as much as you're figuring out what you can live with. <laughs> so applying that same mentality to the culture and what you want in a boss and what kind of leadership you're looking for, that's all really important to figure out as time goes by. Yeah, I also think it's kind of luxury. <laughs> mm, mm. You know, whenever I'm talking to my children, I'm saying that, uh, working hard is not about even money. It's about freedom, freedom to be able to choose what you want to do and not to be tied up to like some job that you don't want to be. You know, it's kind of, it's from my point of view, it's, it's really coming back to those values and like why you want to do and the more you can control and the more you, the more clarity you have in your, in your mind, what you want and where you feel is your right place to be, the better. Yeah, and you're not going to start out of the gate knowing any of this stuff, and that's okay. Yep. <laughs> a lot of this <laughs> stuff I learned the hard way, so it's just trial and error. So let's talk through some places people can network. We talked about uh, marketing automation user groups. Um, let's go through some of the communities out there, maybe some other options uh, for one, I know I've seen that marketing operations people are just getting more and more active on LinkedIn. Uh, so that's that's a great place to go. Yes. So uh, it seems like <laughs> you just go there and you're all surrounded by marketing ops people. Yeah. Revenue ops people, growth ops, like, uh, lots of lots of great people. I would also say that um, it's important to uh, understand like you cannot be visibly <laughs> active and like how many opportunities, like how many communities are there. So maybe you want to stay active in one or two or three, but mm -hmm. uh, be consistent, be engaged and uh, kind of like invest your time into that. And um, it's rather, you'd rather do one, but very well versus like spread over <laughs> and not to get any, any meaningful connections. Um, that's one thing. And I would also say that, um, there are lots of growing opportunities and like going on the, those conferences, this is like very important and uh, very valuable. And even having conversations like uh, unstructured conversations with your peers, whenever you have those people around, uh, whether it's like your partners or someone you work with or your uh, former co-workers, those people are also very important for you, to you. And this is where you can ask for those references and informational interview so to say like and everything else yeah awesome um so some of the communities out there include the mo pros mops pros uh, wizards there's a growth... of ops. Hmm? I'm Ready? Sorry? wizards of ops yeah <laughs> and there is also uh women in, in revenue and i, I believe there is also one growth yet. how have ops. i not joined that one <laughs> I feel like as soon as we are starting um, trying to recollect and list everyone, um, it's kind of like a re you're running the risk of forgetting about a very important <laughs> friend of yours and yeah. you feel bad about that. <laughs> yeah, well, that's funny you mentioned that because I think the underlying story here too is that 
it's kind of a close knit community in B2B mops. We kind of all know each other or at least know of each other. So it's really behooves you to be a kind person. (laughs) Uh, But anyway, so we talked about women in revenue, the growth ops uh, community. I think there's RevOps co-op and I'm sure I'm forgetting like five others, but there's a ton of opportunities on those channels to interact with people, help them out, ask questions. But um, I had Jeff Q on the show and he's very active in certain communities. And I love what he pointed out is if you're going to be asking questions, acknowledge and thank and appreciate when people donate time to you. Yeah. Uh, that way you can keep that conversation going and then try eventually to circle back and, and give back. Yeah. Yeah. And actually answering questions is a very good way <laughs> to, yes. to be like, to get engaged, basically to get involved because uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's very good. Yeah. And just keep in mind, there's no one right answer. Like every company is different. So it's a great opportunity to learn what other people are doing. Yeah. And, you know, some people, uh, especially in market user group and like any kind of user group um, situations, people are very shy about like, oh, I don't know much or I have not done anything significant yet. And I'm saying, this is so wrong. Like, like everything you're doing, you need to just like think through what exactly is valuable, what exactly might be helpful. There should be things that were interesting, original, maybe something specific to your industry, something specific to your specific, to some case. And it's just a matter of talking about it. And yeah. so there are people that are looking for those cues, 100%. Yeah. I mean, if you're starting out in campaign management, which is a great place to start, and you're working closely with the sales team, and you're noticing that certain tools are more accurate than others, that's worth sharing. You know, like there's, there's ways everyone can contribute. I love Absolutely. that point. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. I would also mention that um, personal brand is not the only way to progress career. There are yeah. multiple other ways. And I always feel that people are sometimes uh, feeling that it's um, like very important, but it's not the, like just like it's not the only way. And um, I would also say that sometimes um, whenever I hear that um, people are advising like, oh, you need to build a personal brand. I feel like sometimes it's just like, it, it's not specific enough. Like you really need to explain what exactly people should do, what exactly would help them. Because like writing, and it's it's also like time. And whenever, you know, people advise like how young people, underrepresented people, women, and you know, like you need to go and build your personal brand. It sounds like so flat. It's just like, we are not going to support you. <laughs> you need to go and figure it out. Mm-hmm. I feel like this is like, just like, don't let people go away with that. Like, this is yeah. not a good advice. Like, you, they need to give you more specific advice. Like, what exactly do I need to go on LinkedIn and do what exactly? Do I need to go to community and how, like, what are those? And what exactly yeah. it will give me? Especially if it's, for example, it's your leadership. That would be like, I'm saying, like, that's a red flag for me. It's just like, I'm not going to support you. You'll just do whatever you want. Yeah, no, this is worth saying. I would never just tell somebody, yeah, you should build a brand and expect them to know what to do with that. We do need to be a little bit more prescriptive. And I think the more we can mentor people, a lot of times you're exactly right. Your brand is fine. And some people do a really great job, but if you're not really good at your job and know what you're doing and have emotional IQ, your brand isn't going to help you. You're going to be at a company for a few weeks. They're going to realize it's a bad match. Goodbye. So working with a mentor who can really tease out uh, weak spots, strong points to help you figure out how to use those to your advantage, even the weak points. Um, I think that's just more beneficial than spending a lot of time on social media talking about fluff. Yeah, I 100% agree. And I do think that that's a role of mentor and sponsor and leader, a true leader Mm -hmm. to help out, not just to (laughs) throw out just like very generic advice and go away with that. Yeah. Yeah. And it does work two ways. You have to be interested in your own career and building a growth plan too, but yes, ideally your leader will support and help you with that. Well, 
Helen, I've really enjoyed this conversation. Where can people find you online? Yeah, uh, I'm on LinkedIn. You can find me, Helena Bramova. And um, I'm also very active at Mops Pros community. So happy to be connected and hear from you. Thank Fantastic. You. Fantastic. And for those of you listening and enjoying the podcast, please like, subscribe, comment, tell a couple friends. It's how we keep the podcast going. And for those of you looking for great content like this, check out calibermind.com.